Hello, in this video, we're going to learn some move operations, which are move value, move block, fill block and swap. Finally we'll do a simple project. First instruction is move value. This instruction transfer the content of its input to the output. This is, its ladder symbol. Now, the value of MW4 is 10, and the MD0 is 20. When I activate this instruction with this contact, the value at its input will copy to output. Usually input-output data types, are the same. But sometimes, they may be different. Here, the input address, MW4U16 bits. MD0 has 32 bits. So this instruction can transfer MW4 value to MD0. But it cannot transfer a number with 32 bit to an address with 16 bit. Another point is here, the input value can be transferred to more than one address. Let's see this instruction in TIA software. Let me insert a move value instruction from the left list. If I hold the mouse on its input, I can see data types, which this instruction support them. I want to transfer a constant number such as 20, to two memory addresses. Now let's test it. Now, both outputs are zero. As you see, when the enable input is activated, the number 20 will be copied to outputs. Pay attention, TIA software automatically chose a best way to show numbers. Here, the first output value is shown base decimal format, and the second output on hexadecimal. If you remember, we've explained binary, octal, decimal, and hexadecimal standards which are used by TIA software. As you see, with right click, we can change display format. Alright, before to start another instruction, let me explain what is data block. Until now, we have seen timers or counters, need a data block to work correctly. Now click here, on add new block. We have seen how to use functions before. Now select data block. Data block is a type of memory to store data. Here define a name. Suppose, there are 10 motors in an industrial process, and I need to store some initial information about them. Such as their maximum minimum and their default speeds. So. I chose motor's name for this data block. Chose the global DB, and then click on OK. My data block with the name motors, is inserted here. Now, I can define motor's data. First I define max speed tag. Here I can determine its data type. At this column, I can choose, its initial value. As you see, you can define any parameter with any data type.
Okay, I want to explain, an useful way, to define similar data. Suppose you have 10, or 100 similar motors. So, I have to define 10 or 100 tags, for their default speeds. Here, with array structure, we can define them easily. So, at this column, select array, then select U data type. Then determine number of your motors. I select number 1 to 10. Now I can write a default speed for each motor. Well, you have learned array format of data. Let come back, to learn another move instruction. Move block. Compare with move value instruction, this has an additional count input. The count specifies how many data elements are copied. Let's see what this simple ladder program do. Here is a move block instruction. As you see, its IN input, refers to motor data block, and array with number 0. At the next input, count, we have number 3. So this instruction is going to move these three values. But where is its target? See the output address. It refers to motor data block, array with number 8. So when the N input is activated by this contact, the first three value will be copied to the last three address. Next instruction is similar to move block. It fills a memory area with the value of the IN input. Let's see what this ladder program do. As you see, its output refers to motor data block and array with number 2. And also its count value is 5. So, if I activate this contact, the fill instruction, Write number 900 on all 5 selected addresses. Alright, let's see the last instruction. Swap. We can use the swap instruction, to change the order of the bytes at input in, and query the result at output. The swap task is different. This instruction just works with Word and DWORD data, which use 16 and 32 bits. Here we have number 2000 at input, and 0 at MW2 address. Let's see what happen, when this contact activates swap instruction. Alright, to understand what does swap do. I change my display format to hexadecimal. So, this number is the hexadecimal representation of number 2000. As you now, MW0 address use 16 bits, you can see the binary representation of number 2000 at bottom. We can easily change hexadecimal number to binary form. It just need to convert each 4 bits of a binary form, to a number for hexadecimal format. Well, 
for a word data which has two bytes, the swap instruction, swap their place. Now, see and compare input and output result, which 07 swap with D0. Now let's see how does swap instruction do with a double word. From the right list, select swap instruction, and click here to open help window. Here we can see how swap change order 4 bytes of a double word data. Alright, let's do a simple project. Suppose we have a speed motor displayer. First define an array in a data block to store initial speeds of 10 motors, we have just done this part. Then write a program to show speed motors every 5 seconds. For this part we need a pulse timer. Let's start programming from the first. Well, here, I have defined a data block. At this data block, we can store and see instantaneous speed of 10 motors. Let me define another data block which is going to be updated every 5 seconds. At this block, I define an array which has 10 rows. Now I insert a move block. I select the first array address, for the first input. I want to move all speeds. So I write 10 here. At the output, I use the second array. This instruction move all 10 speeds number from the first data block to second. But I want to do it every 5 seconds. So I need to insert a pulse timer. I want this timer repeat its work every 5 seconds. So I use a comparator instruction. When the elapsed time is 0, my timer start its work. When the timer reach to 5 seconds and after that, its elapsed value back to zero, the timer will start again. Now I use another equality comparator. Here, when the timer reach to 5 second, the move block instruction, updates speeds numbers at the second block data. Let's test this program. As you see, the timer start its work, every 5 seconds. Also, the move block instruction updates its output, every 5 seconds. Let me open a watch table. Here, 
First I insert motor speed array from the first block. Then I insert the second array. Let me have a better view. Alright, click here to monitor all array values. Now, let me write another speed value at this column. I click here, to modify speed values. As you see, this program is updating the speed value of the second array, every 5 seconds. This program can be used for industrial displayers. As you know, if the speed value change simultaneously, human eyes don't able to read them. Thanks for watching. In next videos, we'll do a practical project with Factory IO, and also continue learning TIA software instructions.